The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Well, we're getting lots of volatility in the market, folks. We had a high up there this morning at 45.29, which was the 61% retracement, and the market immediately dropped 30 handles all the way down to uh, 45 even, and then come right back and made another new high. So it's certainly got a lot of movement behind. We've had tremendous movement in the Dow Jones. We were up over 200 points at one time, and it dropped down to uh, unchanged on the day, and now it's been rallying back. It has not made a new high yet, but the S&P certainly has. This is a pattern that I posted here is a perfect Gartley pattern, folks. And when I mean perfect, it works about two out of three times. So it could easily fail and go all the way up to 45.74 without any trouble at all. Uh, the fact that it hit that number and backed off 30 points, that was my – I had two trades of the day today. One of them was in the – I'll show you the other one in just a second. But to sell that at uh, 49, 45.29, and, of course, it broke 30 handles, and you certainly would have been able to take some profit out of that because it went straight down, paused just uh, for about two and a half minutes, right at the 78 percent level of the day's low from yesterday and immediately goes up and make new highs. So these are some of the things that I'm looking at intraday, but the fact that when you make that much money, you're only risking 10 points on the original trade. And when you make 30 points on the other one, that's, that's what your maximum level is for unit one. If you trade two units, you maybe go for something more, but that's what it's all about. It's about risk control. And when markets are this volatile and this active, you've got to use a stop, folks, because believe me, you can come in here and someone can say, hey, we're done raising interest rates and we're going to drop interest rates now and things are going to go a great deal against you. And this you do not want to have happen. That's where, that's where it hurts. I can remember my uh, first day at work at uh, Drexel Burnham, and they said to me, he says, look, our customers are accustomed to losing money, and they're accustomed to making money. The one thing they're not accustomed to is losing all their money. And if you lose more than 30%, you're not going to be here as an employee much longer. Well, I stayed there six years, and I didn't have many drawdowns because I was lucky being bullish in gold during those six years. But it was a heck of a run, and I, I certainly enjoy it. Uh, by the way, I, when I was in L.A. The, this past week, I stopped by to visit one of my old clients. He's uh, 89 years old, and he is uh, he's pretty much an invalid now. Uh, but he's, his mind is still good, so I got to spend about an hour with him in his beautiful home in Beverly Hills. He's got a, a nurse, and he's got a, a, a care keep as caretaker. He had no children, and uh, he's leaving all his money to USC, which I which I think is a good event. But he he was an attorney in uh, Beverly Hills and uh, did uh, a lot of uh, pro bono work and just a great job. But Lewis was a, a real class act in my opinion and. I cried the last two hours on the way home because he had a lot of memories for me, and he, he was really instrumental in helping me. Now, folks, I'm going to share another chart with you that's just as important. Uh, I think I'm going to share it with a little luck. Oh, I think we've got lucky today. Hang on, boys and girls. This might be the lucky day. Let's just check and see if we've got it right. And please tell me we got it right. Folks, this is the Treasury bonds over the past month. You see the high today was 21, 121.19. That was a 382 retracement of the high that we made way back on July 19th when the market was making a high at that time. All right, now this move is very similar in action. You see how perfectly symmetrical they are? Now, if it starts getting above 121.25, something like that, then this is broken the sequence and we're probably gonna go a lot higher. But at that point, you don't have to risk very much. If you'd have done that trade, you, you immediately had a $300 profit in it, so you could put your stop at break even if you wanted to. And that's what I usually try to do. But the high was 121.20, and so you only have to risk a couple ticks on that. And so that's what the whole thing about this 
business of trading is all about is putting the stops in so that you don't have to risk very much. The only way you can risk a small amount is if you prepare what the trades are supposed to be for the day. Okay. Now, I had one yesterday that looked really good. It looked like the gold was going to stop at uh, 1965. And I said, if it gets much above 1967, it's probably going to go higher. Well, 1967 was boom, and away it went all the way up to 1976. There's another example of what you try to do when you're, you know, trying to reduce your risk on some of these. That that's really what what I try to focus on because if you take some small losses along the way, you know, folks, believe it or not, I've had a heck of a run here in these past few months, and I'm only hitting at about 40% of my 48% of my trades, and I that that's usually I'm right at 60. 65%. But when I do under that, I'm making more money than, than I'm making when I hit two out of three. So I, I'm taking some of these. I've had some good, pretty good runs on, and especially crude oil and gold. Today, we missed crude oil, folks, by, by 10 ticks, uh, $110, and it dropped $1,300 from that level. And boy, you think that's not frustrating? Raise your hand. Yes, Johnny, I see that I'm frustrated too. But that's all part of it. You know, tomorrow, and it might, maybe, maybe later today, it'll go up and get that number. I don't know. But it had everything going for it. It had three three trade setups for today. There was crude oil, gold, excuse me, crude oil, bonds, gold, and the S&P. Uh, three of the four worked. And uh, so we'll see uh, which ones don't work. But uh, that's that's neither here nor there. So let's keep that in mind. And there's one other one here that we talked about that uh, is really running this whole game. And it has just started, folks. This move that we're seeing here in the U.S. Oh, Larry, Larry. That we're seeing here in the U.S. dollar, at least it's working in my uh, in the Tiger Den today or the TFNN room. There's the this is what we've seen here. Now all we've done so far this was Sunday, remember? So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday we've been long the euro. We sold the euro out today because it had a, a two and a half day run, and it made 100, uh, 116, 112 pips, which is fourteen hundred dollars. We were only risking thirty. And now we're waiting to see what the pullback will be here on the next move. Now, remember, folks, I'm focusing on the patterns working. And when they work, they're going to pay you automatically. And when they don't work, they're going to spank you. But they're not going to spank you with a paddle. They're going to spank you with a little cotton swab so that you don't get hurt too badly. So that's what we're watching. This is, in, to me, of all the charts that I'm looking at, that S&P chart and this chart in the uh, – U.S. dollar, because U.S. dollar, you're talking about the, well, about the seven major currencies in the world out of the 22 that trade under cross rate. And uh, that's that's what we're that's what we're trying to do is we, we only trade the, the five majors, folks. We trade the euro, the pound, the yen, the Canadian and the Australian. Those are the ones that we trade. I don't do I've never traded the RMB. Um, I've never traded. Well, I haven't traded the Swiss franc since they pulled that bank robbery uh, back in 2014. I believe is when they came in and uh, dropped the market twenty thousand dollars in one day, and then took it back up the next day, twenty thousand dollars. I don't want any part of that action. In fact, they should have been banned from forex for what they did. But you know, if they don't count votes over there, they weigh them. And again, getting to votes. Remember the thing that's happened in Aust uh, in uh, Australia. Australia. Try it again, Larry. Africa about the uh, BRICS bringing in other countries. You know, Russia, India, uh, Brazil, and China have also brought in Iran and Egypt and Ethiopia and uh, some other countries to go into the IMF. And what they've done is they've been able to dilute the votes for the IMF. So the as of January 1st, folks, they are not, the U.S. is not going to be in control of the IMF. Of course, they'll still pay for everything. Why wouldn't they do that? Let's take a break here. 877 With rising inflation, rocketing interest rates, a volatile dollar, an uncertain market, there's an asset that all traders flock back to, gold. However, these irregular times also mean a regular gold market, which presents its own unique challenges. This brings up the question, what moves the gold market? This is a question that I'll be answering in my next live webinar. On August 30th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a live free webinar for all those who subscribe to my newsletter, The Gold Report. The Gold Report has been in publication for over two decades, and I've seen just about every market gold has been traded in. This experience lends me great insight when trading gold and other mining equities, and now that insight can be yours. On August 30th, I will deep dive into gold, bonds, and the dollar, where they are now, how they affect each other, and what to look for when looking to set up a trade. 
Additionally, I will provide a comprehensive breakdown of the XAU, HUI, and GDX, as well as cover individual gold equities and answer questions live on the air. Subscribe to the Gold Report today so you don't miss this rare moment in gold. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Man, I tell, you know, folks, the biggest frustration I have in business and just about everything else is the technical part of this business. I mean, I, I just really I'm not very good at it. I never have been. Don't profess to be. But by golly, uh, I think I get these things fixed the way they're supposed to be. And uh, yet uh, nothing really happens. I'm going to try to do this with the screen and I don't think it's going to work, but let's get it up there. Nah, just a second here. It'll only make. I'm going to try one more time. It's a really nice uh, picture of what's been happening in the market here today, and uh, I want to bring it up to you. Just now, I, when I do that, I lose a cord. Oh boy, or Discord. Why did they ever call that company Discord? No, that they, they can't see it now because I didn't post it. You're showing your chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average, huh? Tell me. Oh, now it's gone. All right, let's try it again. We're going to see if we can get it up here uh, one more time. If I can't, this would be worthy of you. Uh, oh, it worked. There you go. Okay, now there you go. Here was the high. Yesterday is where, if you remember, yesterday is where I sold this thing right in here. You remember? Then it backed off here in the morning, and then that's I got stopped out right here. I took my 100-point loss right there. And it went all the way up to here. And look, it came down. And believe it or not, folks, I'm not making this up. This went right to the exact 382 and then rallied up to the 618. If you think these dudes are out there that are doing this uh, algorithmic trading don't know these numbers, oh, oh, my goodness, they do indeed. And so pay attention to this. It's really, really quite important. So this is what we're watching here today. Uh, we just made we just made new highs, of course, in the S and P and the Nasdaq. We did not do it in the Dow Jones. Whether that means anything or not is not uh, too important. But that pattern that I posted today with the Dow Jones with the E mini S and P up there at night uh, 45 uh, 29 is very important. Whether that continues to be important by the end of the day, you know, certainly remains to be seen. Uh, we had a question about risk control, and uh, that's probably the number one people ask me. Uh, about risk control folks a risk control is a personal thing you have to decide how much you're going to risk on the trade you know you, you can look at the pattern and you can look at everything yeah but the two reasons 
that most people lose, and this is looking at 10,000 accounts from Merrill Lynch from 1973 to 1983. I mean hundreds of thousands of trades. I went through with these with Mark and Paula Douglas back when we were in Chicago. It used to be our little fun thing to do to see what how people made money and how people lost money. And the statistics on those 10,000 is really valid, folks. When you get a sample size that big, you, you can't believe it. But here's the statistics behind it. Of those, those people, 80% of the people that started out lost, okay? The people that stayed with it for two, three, or four years eventually started to make money. It was the new people coming in, the fresh blood that was giving all the money. The two main reasons why people lost out of all the stuff that they did, reason number one, you're probably going to be surprised, they put their stops too close, in and out of the market, little tiny losses, little tiny profits. They they did, didn't have much of a chance, okay? The second reason is they wouldn't use any stop at all. I mean, they would have humongous, they have some great profits and then have one humongous loss that would just tear them to shreds. So those are the things that, uh, you know, we found out from that level. So, you know, I was familiar with some of that because, you know, I worked at Drexel from 76 through uh, uh 82, but no, I only had two customers there, Ty Andrews and, uh, oh God, what's the other guy's name? Uh, Stan, Stan, uh, Stan Kaplan. Stan just passed away here about uh, two and a half, uh, three and a half weeks ago over in Palm Springs. But those were the only two guys that put their orders in themselves. They could literally call Sue and she would uh, li literally put the orders in for them. I didn't even have to, to mess up. Remember, every time they traded, it was $40, folks, $40 commission in and out. I mean, compared to what we play now, not only that, but you had to pick up the phone, okay, and you had to wait for the fill to come back, okay, and then after the fill was, they had to call you back. I mean, can you imagine? Now, we do this in a, in a fraction of a second. So that's why our business today is so big and so many people trading is because it's so doggone fair. And believe me, they follow these stops really closely. So you usually have a pretty good idea of what you're doing when you're following these things, because it's it's, it's important to remember that I, I this is my my one of my things that I say every day. Besides, live every day in an attitude of gratitude, is that uh, it's not how much money you make, it's how much money you don't lose, and that's the key. Because if you can do that, you're going to be far better off than if you don't. And if you don't, then you'll probably be doing something else for a living. Regarding the difference between gold and silver today, someone's asked me that question, why is gold so strong and silver so weak? They're two different commodities, folks. They, they really are. A lot of people that trade gold trade silver, but silver is an industrial metal more than the gold is, which is a you know precious metal. So that's the reasoning behind some of these things of why you see you've got to trade each one separately because they give you different signals, and that's the main thing. Do they go in the same trend most of the time? Yes, but not all the time. Uh, the, the biggest frustration today from our point of view is we had a perfect signal in the short crude oil, the, the October crude at uh, 82, uh, 82.11. The high was 82.03. We missed it by 8 80 cents and it's broken $1,300. Now, it might go back and still get it because that's going to stay valid for at least two days, at least all the rest of today and possibly tomorrow because it's hanging up there. And it might, I haven't checked it in a long time to see what's, what it's been doing, but uh, that was the one that set up just uh, really nicely. And so those are the ones that we're watching here today. By the way, remember, uh, tomorrow we're going to have, uh, he'll be able to talk to us about crude oil, gasoline, and uh, heating oil. And you could, and that's Mike Moore of Moore Analytics. And as you know, uh, Mike has been talking about the difference between gasoline and heat oil, which have been in a, in a nosedive to the downside and crude oil rallying to the upside. There again, you got to trade what you see and not what you think. And so you trade the ones that are giving you the patterns, the other ones you move on and don't worry too much about it. And then on Friday, God willing, <laughs> Joe DiNapoli will be here. I've talked to him three times today. He promised me no politico, so uh, he'll probably sneak it in somehow, but we'll buzz him off the air just as quick as we can. We want to keep it uh, as civil as we possible can. Someone asked, uh, sent me a little note saying I didn't think it was very smart of me to mention what happened to that dude over in Spain, the, the soccer guy. Well, folks, I tell you, that, that bothered me a great deal. I, I just... I just can't believe that uh, people can be that uh, cruel. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Yes, Johnny. Yes, Johnny. I'll shut up and we'll move on to the next chart. So hold on one second here 
and I want to get up the next chart that we'll be able to see here in just a second. So hold your horses and we'll be right with you because it is going to be the Chinese stock market. And I hope it's going to be the Chinese stock market. Nope, it's going – no, that's not it. Oh, brother, what's happened to my – uh, shut the front door. This is the one that I'm waiting for. We got down to this uh, bottom. We, let me hold on one second. It's the British pound, folks. Give me one second because this pattern has not been completed. You know, I wanted to show it to you because the euro completed. Uh, hmm. I don't know what's wrong, Jacob, but the darn thing ain't working, buddy. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, this is the site of all my frustration, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. And uh, anyway, we've got to take a break here in about 30 seconds we're, in, right now. We're going to have Jeff Huge back, and we're going to have some really good things to tell you about the market. So stay with us. 877-927-6648. inflation, rocketing interest rates, a volatile dollar, an uncertain market, there's an asset that all traders flock back to, gold. However, these irregular times also mean a regular gold market, which presents its own unique challenges. This brings up the question, what moves the gold market? This is a question that I'll be answering in my next live webinar. On August 30th from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a live free webinar for all those who subscribe to my newsletter, The Gold Report. The Gold Report has been in publication for over two decades, and I've seen just about every market gold has been traded in. This experience lends me great insight when trading gold and other mining equities, and now that insight can be yours. On August 30th, I will deep dive into gold, bonds, and the dollar, where they are now, how they affect each other, and what to look for when looking to set up a trade. Additionally, I will provide a comprehensive breakdown of the XAU, HUI, and GDX, as well as cover individual gold equities and answer questions live on the air. Subscribe to the Gold Report today so you don't miss this rare moment in gold. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have our friend and uh, what am I, I guess I was trying to say, um, well, my, my language is uh, slipping a little bit today, but a good friend and a great analyst, Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights. Jeff, thanks for joining us today, my friend. Me on the show. 
Yo, it's love to have. I see your seasonality of September to remember. This has definitely been a, uh, of course, we've been up for a couple of days here, but boy, September has been a little nasty for most people. Well, it is the worst month of the year for equities, uh, bar none. You know, I think uh, mm-hmm. uh, the median return for the S&P 500 in the month of September, if you look at data back to 1928, is minus 1.56%. And the median return for the NASDAQ 100 during the month of September, and this is looking at data back to 1985, is minus 1.2%. But the thing that's probably not as well known about September is that it tends to be a little bit front end loaded. And so uh, normally the first half of September is usually worse than the second half. And uh, according to Goldman Sachs, The period between September 2nd and September 14th typically accrues the majority of the decline for the month. Okay. Well, we had a pretty big decline, then we've had a rally back. So there's a possibility there could be more to the downside. Is that the analysis that uh, you're looking at? I think there's quite a bit more to the downside, personally. Okay. Now, is that based on, I know you don't use your opinion too much, but you're basing it on these wonderful charts that you send us. So let's take a look at the next one here. Oh, this one really has a downward momentum. This is the Montgomery uh, dates that we're looking at. Let's take a quick look at this one, folks. This is going to be real yeah, so, interesting um, if I can just... The, the chart, Larry, was put together by Ned Davis Research. This is their cycle composite for the S&P 500 for the year mm-hmm. 2023. And the solid blue line uh, that begins in January and ends December indicates the expected path and return for the S&P 500 based on three cycles that they aggregate together. It's the one-year seasonal cycle, the four-year presidential cycle, and the 10-year decennial cycle. Now, when we look at this blue line, this solid blue line, the important thing to remember is that the trend of the line is far more important than the level of the line. However, if you look to the far right scale, you can see that uh, the prediction is for about a 10.5% return for the year, and we topped at about 20% on uh, July 27th of this year so far, and we've pulled back somewhat. And as you mentioned, we got a little bit of a a counter-trend rally uh, going right now. But what we did is we doctored up the chart a little bit, and and we added um, a horizontal line to indicate where 10.5% would be for the gold dash data series, which actually represents the S&P 500's actual return and actual path as of uh, end of last week. And then we've added six vertical lines, and those vertical lines represent Montgomery turn dates. These are uh, cycle turn dates uh, forecasted by the work of uh, the um, late and great uh, Paul McRae Montgomery, who was a tremendous uh, cycle analyst and and built a 50-year career off of his work. And the thing that's interesting to me is that some of those cycle turn dates line up almost perfectly with the expected path of the S&P 500. And what we're thinking is that we may very well see the path, the trend of that that cycle composite play out, but the steepness or the magnitude of the changes uh, could be significantly greater. And so uh, one of the things that we've been hypothesizing, Larry, is that the two center vertical lines are major turn dates, and they are October 14th and October 29th. And we think we could see a very significant decline in that period that could carry the S&P down substantially uh, below, uh, you know, its its recent lows. And, in Mm -hmm. fact, um, if we look at the cycle composites, uh, uh, ultimate um, end-of-year sort of expectation, a rally back into that 10.5% expected return would actually suggest that we could bottom in late October and rally into year-end to recover mm-hmm. some of that loss and end the year near around 10.5%. This is my working hypothesis. It's just me playing around with cycle data, and, and I think there's a pretty good chance that this could play out this way. Well, that would be one heck of a prediction, my friend. I, I remember October 29th was a crash of uh, 2000 or 1929, but people don't realize this. It went down for another uh, 9 or 10 days. It bottomed on November the 10th or 11th and then rallied. Uh, 61, almost 60 percent up into April 1st and then went down for uh, three years. So it was uh, it was a really wild market. But October 29th certainly historically means a great deal. That's for sure. And not many Mm -hmm. people alive 
hey, very few people that, well, that are trading a lot. I mean, there's none of them. They've got to be 100 some years old. I'm close. But I, <laughs> even then, I wasn't trading then. But it is a historical date. I've not had too much luck with historical dates. I've looked a lot of them. But uh, I, I just go with what the patterns tell me. And that gives me a better idea. Let's move on to our next, next chart here because you've got some uh, really good ones that I want to uh, let the folks see. Now, this is the one that uh, I'm really interested in here because we've had a uh, situation in the U.S. dollar that we've been watching really closely over these last few days. What are you looking at here, Jeff? Well, this obviously is about a two-year chart uh, looking at the daily close of the U.S. dollar index versus the S&P 500 on the bottom. And, you know, the conclusion that we would point out is that there's been a pretty interesting negative correlation between these two series. And, you know, one of my clients asked me recently, is it the stock market driving the dollar or is the dollar driving the stock market? In my view, the way I look at the data, it looks like it's the dollar that's driving the stock market. And in fact, um, you know, if we're, we've been reading about an impending demise of the dollar for 20 years. It just hasn't happened. And that's probably because there's no real realistic alternative to the dollar. I mean, we're not going to start, you know, buying uh, chewing gum at the local uh, convenience store with Chinese yuan or euro or Russian rubles <laughs> or Turkish lira, for that matter. The dollar is going to be the dollar, right? And it is the reserve yeah. currency, and it will likely be the reserve currency for a very, very long time to come. Uh, at least when, if somebody else has greater than 11 aircraft carriers, that might change the scope of the discussion. But uh, I think that's a long way out. Um, the U.S. dollar has broken out above its short-term downtrend line, and it now appears poised to challenge key resistance at about 104.61. I think a sustained bullish inflection above that level would project a measured move up to about 1010 or 110, rather. And, uh, you know, if we take a look at what happened to the stock market as the dollar moved up from its lows of around 99 and a half, up to around uh, 104 and change. The S&P dropped by 272 handles. Um, I think if we break out and move up to 110, we could see a much bigger decline in terms of S&P uh, performance. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's an incredible prediction because that would really uh, that would really put us that would be relatively bullish for gold too, wouldn't it? Or I would think so. Yeah, but you never know, that's for sure. Uh, Jeff, we're going to have a, a break coming up here in about 40 seconds, but uh, the one thing I'd like for you to do at the end of the day is make sure you go over, uh, you know, the service that you have with your newsletter because it's it's just AAA quality, in my opinion, that anybody can understand. So make sure we do that. We're going to take a break now. We'll be back with Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights. Stay tuned, folks. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. 
Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights Firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hey, we're back, folks, and we're talking with Jeff Hughes of Alpha Insights, and we'll be talking about the primary degrees in Elliott Wave. So please continue, my friend. Sure. You know, um, Larry, we've been looking at this as being something of a larger degree uh, pattern. And, uh, you know, a lot of people feel like the bear market might have ended in October of last year. We think that was just the first leg down of a multi, multi-year uh, corrective waveform that will actually be correcting a super cycle degree advance that began in 1932 and we think ended in January of 2022. So we think this could go on for a number of years. Uh, we count the first move down uh, into that October 2022 low as being a uh, primary wave one down. And it traced out what's known in Elliott Wave parlance as a leading expanding diagonal. So it's a fairly rare uh, uh, pattern, and it actually came up uh, a little bit off kilter from its um, expectations. The final low was a little shorter uh, than it should have been. It should have, it should have fallen a little bit further. So uh, that's what kind of caught, caught us off guard on that. But since that October 13th low, we've um, counted a counter trend advance that we think topped in July, uh, on July 27th. And, and the way we get there is we see the first move up from about uh, October 13th to December 13th last year is five waves up. It's an impulse wave. Uh, that ended intermediate wave A. Then we traced out an ABC flat pattern uh, to complete intermediate wave B. And from the March 13th low, uh, we traced out uh, five waves up to complete intermediate wave C of primary wave two. Now, this was a complex waveform that actually traced out two extensions, um, a fifth wave extension and a fifth of a fifth wave extension. And that actually made, um, you know, the, the identification of this pattern's terminal point somewhat elusive. Uh, we, were, we were, you know, twisted up in this for a while, but we think we finally figured it out. And um, if the counter trend advance topped on July 27th, uh, we think key support is now the minor wave one low. That's the August 18th low at S&P 4335. Now, we've seen this very low volume counter trend advance. It's been a three wave advance. We call that a zigzag in Elliott Wave parlance. Uh, it's mm -hmm. retraced about two thirds of the decline so far. The 786 retracement comes in at 4459. So I think as long as we don't get above that level, uh, we're pretty confident that this will top uh, in minor wave two, and that'll be followed by minor wave three down, uh, which will be part of a five wave impulse pattern that will complete uh, primary wave three down, which should carry the S&P 500 down to significantly lower lows than the October 2022 low. Um, a move below 4,100 on the S&P 
would definitively confirm uh, that the primary wave three uh, down is now in progress. And what's interesting to me is, is we can see, um, you know, the, the development of what's known as a classic pattern top formation of a head and shoulders variety starting to appear here. And so if we break down below that, uh, that August 18th low, that would resolve that pattern. And we count a measured move down to about 4,050, which would take out a number of support levels, uh, you know, the entire 4,100 to 4,200 4, complex, which includes, you know, an open chart gap, the 200-day moving average, a trend line, and, you know, prior uh, highs and lows that, you know, mark uh, important support and resistance levels previously. And so, you know, we think that's going to be a really, really important zone to get through. And once we do get through that, uh, with no uncertain terms, I think that it will mark the next leg of the bear market decline. Jeff, looking at this chart on the uh, the uh, minor degree Elliott wave, it, it, could that be identified as a head and shoulders pattern? They look very. Uh, it looks like a head and shoulders pattern just from exactly. uh, eyeballing. That's, that's my point exactly. What we've done is we've blown up this last three months of price action. This is a 120 minute mm -hmm. range chart using candlesticks, and and you can see this final advance off that uh, August 18th low has taken on an A B C sort of you know corrective wave form. It's a counter trend advance. If that peaks kind of on or about that below that uh, gap resistance zone that we have uh, illustrated, we think the next move down, if it were to take out that August 18th low, would resolve that head and shoulders top, and that would project down substantially lower to around 4,050. We have gap support marked there at 4,240, 4,220. Um, I think that could be some minor support that might hold a minor wave three, but I'd be looking for the market to carry substantially through that level uh, aggressively. And so uh, I don't think it'll, it'll add much to, uh, to the dynamic in terms of support. Well, it certainly does look like a head and shoulders pattern. The $64 question is, you know, sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. That's the main thing. Let's, uh, we've got three minutes here to get a little commercial in for you. So let's start off by talking uh, about your uh, monthly newsletter. It's the best 12 bucks a month a person can spend. It's about the cost of a medium price glass of wine. So tell the folks what you do here, Jeff. Well, every month we publish a newsletter affectionately entitled Huge Insights, the Big Picture. We've been doing it for about two years now. Uh, issue number 25 comes out on Saturday, September 2nd. And uh, we're going to discuss something very, very interesting. We're going to discuss the implications of debt in the economy at this point because, as all oh, boy. know, uh, we're at record yeah. debt levels in terms of the U.S. national debt. Household debt is off the, off the charts. Credit card debt is off the charts. Student loan debt is well over a trillion dollars, and, and payments on student loan debt will resume in September. Uh, this is going to have a major, major impact on uh, economic growth going forward, and we think earnings growth, and we think it will contribute dramatically to uh, the magnitude of the impending recession that we see coming in late 2023, early 2024. So uh, I would encourage all your uh, listeners to, you know, sign up for our newsletter. It's free to have it delivered to your inbox. We give you about a three, four page free look at what we're talking about. And if you want to continue, uh, you can you can pay as little as twelve dollars and fifty cents a month. You buy an annual subscription for one hundred and fifty bucks. And um, I think it's well worth your time. There's a lot of value there. Our, yes. our paid subscribers actually get a weekly email from us. It's one of our institutional reports called Alpha Insights Idea Generator Lab, where we give you our top actionable trade idea of the week, usually a stock pick, sometimes it's an ETF. And we usually go through some kind of midweek market commentary, sector rotation commentary. And, uh, you know, we've got a pretty good track record uh, over the years picking stocks. So uh, that's kind of how we made our bones in the market. So I think there's some value there for the amount that it costs. And I'd encourage you to give it a Give it a look. What, what do you got to lose? $12.50. Yeah, let me tell you, this, it's not a lose, pal, because I've looked at this letter. It's flat, flat worth about 10 times that value, in my opinion, because you break it down in black and white. I understand a lot of people have trouble with the Elliott wave, and, of course, I do, too. Uh, you know, when I look at all those different primary waves and stuff, you know, I basically look at A, B, C, D. But the way you do that newsletter and spread it out, and, folks, uh, his percentage wins is relatively low, but the amount of money that he makes versus his win versus his loss is really quite good, and that's what separates, 
you know, a good trader from a back trader. You know, it's a, how much money you don't lose and not how much money you make. And so you do a great job there, Jeff. So I, I highly recommend this. And I, I don't recommend many newsletters, but uh, you do do a great job. And it's certainly underpriced, in my opinion. So we're going to have you on again soon, my friend. So stay safe and keep the good work up, okay? Thank you, Larry. Look forward to it. Take it's care. It's my now. pleasure, my friend. Jeff Huge, Alpha Insights, folks. Very, very good analyst. We'll be right back. 877-927-6648. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, uh, getting off the, the path of financial stuff, let's take a look at this wheat chart, folks. Uh, this is a four-hour chart of uh, December wheat. Remember, folks, this wheat was trading at $12 a bushel last May when there was no wheat left in the whole world. And now we are at $6 a bushel, and nobody wants to buy it. So that's one of the things that we're looking at. The key point to watch on this chart is one of the things that we work and teach all the time are 382 retracements. And you can see there's been one, two, three, four, five, five on this chart just recently. And now we're coming down. We've made new lows here. We broke, believe it or not, folks, last night, we broke $6 a bushel. We hit 599 and a quarter. I was trying to buy it down there at 592, but no such luck. It rallied 10 cents, so it's really doing very little right now. But uh, this this is this is really important, folks. We, wheat is one of the things that Andrew Lowe had in his book, The Evolution of Technical Analysis, that the, the first chartists were, were astrologers because they used wheat and corn 
uh, on little clay tablets and showed how they did uh, their planting and how they did their supply and demand. It was It's really incredible if you ever read that book, Evolution of Stock. I think it's Evolution of Technical Analysis by Andrew Lowe. Uh, anyway, we're going to be watching this one real closely. That's another one that's been very uh, tight on our uh, uh, alert list and then also the treasury bonds folks watch treasury bonds because if they get above 122 uh, that means that this bear market rally that we're having in tre treasury bonds is going to continue but it, yes that the leads are, the yields are going to look very very attractive but the federal reserve is between a rock and a hard place folks because that interest rate cycle top two and a half years ago and that means interest rates are going to be going higher and like Jeff said you've got all these people that have debt well when people are having debt like this they do not give them a break so let's remember folks it's not how much money you make it's how much money you don't lose live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless